Starbucks is a stock that I've done many videos on. As of the last video, I told you my fair value on it was $71 per share. And it's the same thing on Nike. I said my fair value was $71. And strangely enough, Nike and Starbucks, they both hit $71. And this is when they bottomed. And now they're trading much, much higher. Starbucks is up over 24% over the last five days. And in this video, I'm going to give you my opinion, my updated opinion on it. If I believe now the stock is maybe a, a good buying opportunity, maybe has the momentum has changed and things are getting better or if i owned starbucks i don't own it but if i did own it would i be selling it here or would i be looking into maybe opening a position if i didn't own starbucks i'm going to talk about all those case scenarios and give you my honest and fair valuation model on starbucks stock now i have to say you know with starbucks being up 24 percent it's gonna make the job of the new ceo much much harder the expectations are getting way up and the new ceo as many of you know he used to be the ceo of chipotle chipotle is an amazing company i talked about it many times and i thought the stock was a little bit overvalued it's getting closer to fair value i'm gonna do another update on it but still an amazing company he did an amazing job uh, but with the stock being up you know 24 percent it's not gonna be easy it's, it's he's not some kind of a miracle where he just comes in and he's he has a lot of things to deal with he has to deal with deeply negative comp sales in china you know around 14 percent seven percent international negative two percent in the united states total comp sales globally in total it was negative three percent uh, this is not easy at all guidance was uh, absolutely terrible flat to low single digits for earnings per share although the long-term average for starbucks was expected to be 15 percent and the company is barely gonna grow this year but if you're looking at other things other metrics and this is from a website called placer.ai and it's showing the major coffee chains pretty much uh, visits so the change in average visit per person starbucks was the only negative one so it's not much about the recession all that stuff you know dutch bros has been uh, growing duncan has been growing you know a lot of different ones have been growing but starbucks has been declining if you even look at the change in visits starbucks yes did grow but it didn't grow as fast as duncan's i mean duncan is beating starbucks really i mean same thing with dutch bros same thing with many different things so you have a lot of challenges to deal with you have the whole thing with the unions which i haven't done much research on it but every time i do videos on starbucks I I always see comments about the risk of unionization more deeply within Starbucks and it's going to increase wages, decrease margins, and it's very bad. And I'm already seeing articles about the CEO, which he's known as a union busting CEO, and, and he still has to deal with the unions, and he has to deal with the comp sales, he has to deal with uh, commodity fluctuations, with consumers being a little bit weaker than they were two, a year or two years ago. So that's a lot of stuff to deal with. And with the stock being up 24%, just because of this CEO coming in, it's not going to be easy from here, guys. I mean, a lot of that stuff, in my opinion, got priced in, especially if you're looking at Starbucks itself yes maybe starbucks is a high quality company it's an amazing company but it's not growing it's like one percent growth and you have all those challenges that the ceo has to deal with and you're paying 25 times earnings <laughs> i mean this is, the company was trading at 19 times earnings which is fair for no growth or for low single digit growth but now the ceo came in you still have all these challenges to deal with and so many different things and it's not easy now it's priced at 24 times earnings now yes the stock used to trade at 30 times but it used to grow much much faster from here and i would highly doubt it will ever get back to what where it used to grow at before 20 25 percent maybe you know eight to ten percent revenue growth on the maximum and that's the maximum of 25 to 27 times earnings so you're paying 25 times earnings right now for all those problems and the ceo has to deal with them you're not getting any bargain the free cash flow yield is 3.2 percent it used to be in the high fours now it's 3.2 percent I mean, for no growth, and even in the future, it's not going to be like the fastest. It's not, it's not a tech company, guys. I mean, it's not going to be the fastest growing ever. So if, if I had to buy Starbucks right now, I didn't have a position, I wouldn't be a buyer. I mean, I'm just being honest. I think it's too late to be buying Starbucks. I'm going to show you my valuation model and many different things. But from me looking at a common sense analysis of this very simple metrics based on how much the stock went up and what's being priced in, I, I mean, unless the CEO makes some kind of a miracle, some kind of a game-changing product that's going to shock people all over the world, you know, not, not like the PayPal CEO shocks the world, but, you know, a better shocking the world kind of CEO. Uh, unless he does that, I mean, I, I just don't see 
it. Maybe the stock could trade at 30, 35 times earnings, but but I would I wouldn't bet on it. But if I had to buy Starbucks here, I wouldn't buy it. You know, it doesn't mean it can go higher, but but I would personally wait. If I look at my uh, valuation model, which is a very simple one, I always like to keep things very short. From their own guidance, they expect flat to low single digit growth for 2024. So I put in 1%. For the analyst estimates for the future, they expect a rebound to 7%, 8%, 9%, 8%. 8 Again, I don't like comparing it to Nike, but Nike and Estee Lauder and so many different companies in different industries kind of had the same thing. They had the massive boom from 2021 and they stuck up in a lot of things, did many different things and had more employees than they needed to and the mismanagement and they got complacent and then they had one very bad year and then they were guiding that the next year is going to be much better and this kind of stuff took two to three years for them being one to two percent uh, revenue growth so betting on starbucks going from one percent to seven percent is not going to be easy to achieve all right but even if we take an average of let's say seven percent which i believe you could agree with me that it's fair i wouldn't be betting 10 to 12 percent for starbucks i don't think so unless we have stimulus checks or some crazy but again i would bet on seven percent if i'm betting seven percent net income margin right now is 11 percent the analysts they have it and an expansion to 12 percent although that's hard to achieve but i'm using 12 percent P.E. ratio is 25 times earnings. I'm using the same of 25 times. I mean, I, I, guys, I just cannot use anything more than 25. 25 times for such growth is even a premium for most stocks. I mean, some tech companies like Google are trading like 19 or 20 times earnings. So putting 25 times earnings on Starbucks with slow revenue growth and you know 10 or 11 percent or 12 percent net income margins is more than fair and i wouldn't bet on anything beyond it so using 25 times earnings 3.2 percent shareholders yield which is you know buybacks dividends i put them all together in total i would get around a 49 percent upside or 9.1 percent CAGR over the next five years and this is using pretty optimistic numbers i mean maybe starbucks doesn't grow seven percent maybe it grows two percent maybe the PE ratio goes back to 19 times or 22 23 times i wouldn't be surprised but even with using optimistic case scenarios i'm only getting 49 percent on the upside if i want to double my money over the next five years with starbucks which is the minimum of what i look for in stocks 15 percent a year or a double every five years what I want, I want Starbucks at $71 per share. So my fair value hasn't really changed. And $71 per share is like a 23, 24% decline. Now, maybe Starbucks isn't really going there. But if you manage to buy Starbucks in this range, 71, maybe 76, maybe $80, anything below 80, I mean, over the long term, if I had Starbucks, I personally wouldn't be selling it because it's ultimately going to play out. The company is not going anywhere. The CEO is amazing. So you're going to have some changes going on. But I personally believe for current investors right now, a lot of those changes have already been priced in over the last five days, unless the CEO does a miracle. I would expect Starbucks to, you know, reverse on when the excitement fades and starts going back down. And that's just what I think. But if I had Starbucks below $80, I wouldn't be a seller. I would hold it for the long term. But if I had to buy Starbucks here relative to other opportunities, it doesn't make any sense. And this is just my opinion on Starbucks, you know, not financial advice. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please press the like button and maybe consider subscribing. So I'll talk to you in another video.